Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. When three people died and one was left seriously ill from suspected mushroom poisoning after a lunch in a regional Victorian home, the world was captivated. Now, the meal host, Erin Patterson, has been charged with murder and attempted murder. The intrigue has only intensified. Today, a criminologist on why it took police three months to arrest the 49-year-old and whether she can receive a fair trial given the unprecedented interest in the case. My name is Associate Professor Xanthi Mallet and I'm in criminology at the University of Newcastle. Xanthi, there was something that struck me about a press conference Victorian police gave last week about this case. Detective Inspector Dean Thomas from the Homicide Squad said he can't think of any other Victorian investigation that has generated such huge interest. This investigation has been subject to incredibly intense levels of public scrutiny and curiosity. I think it's particularly important that we keep in mind that at the heart of this, three people have lost their lives. It sure has captivated people's attention, hasn't it? Absolutely, it has. And and I saw that press conference and I thought about that afterwards. And I agree, I can't think of another Victorian case which has really gripped people. And we're not just talking Victoria, we're talking nationwide and actually internationally. There's been plenty of international news headlines too. So this is a case that has really captured and intrigued people, Australia and worldwide. This morning, new questions swirling about the deadly mushroom mystery. The bizarre tragedy now grabbing global headlines. An Australian woman has been charged with murder after the deaths of three people by suspected mushroom poisoning. The lady who served up the lunch, Erin Patterson, has just been charged with murder. Police are pretty worried, though, aren't they, about the attention and focus that's been given to this one case? Yes, they certainly are. And that's the problem with these really high profile cases. I know people have many questions in relation to this matter and will be hopeful that I can provide answers to them today. However, it's not that simple. While we do want to provide timely updates about this matter, it is critical that doing this does not adversely impact the current investigation or any future processes. There will be a lot of discussion in the media, professional media and social media. Innuendo and chats will take place. uh, And that's really the problem because, you know, that's where things can go wrong when it comes to court, because some of that may be prejudicial. People will have an opinion. They will be sharing that. And news outlets know to be very cautious. Now charges have been laid that that anything that they say could be potentially prejudicial. However, people on social media are not as cautious and don't understand the impact that those discussions can have. And that's why everyone should be very cautious. Well, with that in mind, let's step back carefully through what we know already. (laughs) Very carefully. (laughs) Yes, this all began on July the 29th when Erin Patterson hosted a lunch at her home in Victoria. Yes, so what happened after that is four people became very seriously unwell and were hospitalised. So this is Erin Patterson's, her ex-husband's parents and his uncle and aunt. Heather Wilkinson, her sister Gail Patterson and Gail's husband Don died after eating lunch at the Patterson's former daughter-in-law's Leon Gather home. So those four people were admitted to hospital. Uh, Sadly, three people died of suspected mushroom poisoning, as it turned out. The fourth person, Ian Wilkinson, actually survived that, but he was very seriously unwell. He was in a coma for a significant period of time. He has actually recovered and has been released from hospital, thankfully, since then. And really, that's where everything started, the investigation as to what happened at that lunch and why, sadly, those people died and others became so unwell. Mm, She served a beef wellington at this lunch, which, of course, a key ingredient is mushrooms. And all the guests had symptoms consistent 
with poisoning by mushroom, according to police. Yes. And so we're talking three months ago now and police are confirming those details. But obviously we have seen Erin Patterson subsequently arrested for on a number of charges in relation to those deaths and and Ian Wilkinson becoming so unwell. So Erin Patterson last week was arrested and then charged. Tell me a bit more about what happened in the lead up to that. So three months later, last Thursday, Erin Patterson was taken in for questioning. This morning, detectives arrested a 49-year-old female in relation to this incident and a search warrant was subsequently executed at her residential address. This search... She wasn't charged initially on the Thursday, but while she was being questioned, her house was actually searched, so a search warrant had been granted and the police did a thorough investigation of her property inside and out. And later on that evening, around 7.30, she was actually charged with three counts of murder and five counts of attempted murder. How did we get to five counts? We knew by this point that Simon Patterson, her ex-husband, had become very unwell around 18 months before the lunch with unidentified gastro symptoms. She was charged with four counts of attempted murder on Simon Patterson going back to 2021 and 2022. And Erin Patterson has maintained her innocence when the press, including News Corp Australia, approached her outside her home and in a written statement she gave to police that was obtained by the ABC. Just can't believe it. Police say you're a suspect. Do you have anything to say about yes, that? Yes, I say I didn't do anything. I love them. And I'm devastated that they're gone. And she absolutely has a right to maintain her innocence and she has to be presumed innocent. That's the way the law works in this country. She has to be presumed innocent until proven otherwise in a court of law. And we are many, many months away from that. Xanthi, you're a criminologist. So tell me, why do you think it took so long for police to lay charges? Before charges are laid, the police have to provide and develop a brief of evidence that will be supplied to the Director of Public Prosecutions. Now, they will then look to see whether charges are warranted. So the police, over the course of that three months, had been running a number of lines of inquiry. They would have been looking at any forensic physical evidence that may have been available. They would have been conducting interviews of relevant parties, including Miss Patterson herself. And you have to remember, Ian Wilkinson was in hospital very unwell, and so they would have also wanted to wait until they could speak to him. Mm, And as you alluded to before, we shouldn't expect the investigation to move along any faster. Now the charges have been laid. So going forward, they will have all of the information they collected from that search. For example, we do know that a specialist IT search dog was brought down from Queensland to Victoria. And so they would have been looking for specific things. So that could be SIM cards, it could be mobile phones, it could be computers or or parts of computers, um, hard drives, for example. So once they've collected all of that information, that's really just the, the start. They need to make sure they've recovered any files that may have been deleted. They need to look through all of that information and make sure that they're following up. They may have to interview more witnesses. They may have to look at search histories, what's been purchased, where a mobile phone may disclose where Erin Patterson had gone, you know, travelled in the period leading up to these deaths. And all of that has to be collated. And that's going to take another significant amount of time. Then they prepare a brief that has to go forward to the defence. And so you can imagine how many weeks and months this type of investigation can take. Mm, Of course, and in high-profile cases like this, how difficult is it for the accused to receive a fair trial? Each case is unique in its its own way. It has unique facets. But there are certainly other high-profile cases where there have been question marks over whether somebody can receive a fair trial, a fair jury trial, because, you know, there's just so much public interest. If this were to reach trial, you know, we're still at least 18 months away from, from a full trial, if we get there, then would would a jury be 
able to be objective given the amount of information that's currently swirling around in the public domain. And we saw that with Chris Dawson, for example, when he was on trial for murdering his wife, Lynette Dawson. That trial was problematic because it was subject to the Teacher's Pet podcast, which had millions of downloads and everybody had an opinion. And that's problematic when you expect a jury to go into a jury trial and not take any other information, extraneous information with them. I'm expecting it to go forward to jury trial and most people in the legal profession, that is their preference, that is seen as a, a core a core foundation of the legal process and that's something obviously that will have to be looked at closer to the time. And tell me, in all of this as it unfolds, what responsibility does the media have? And in your view, how has it been reporting this case so far? Well, there has been some quite surprising reporting. There has been some programs that I won't name any, some programs that have run that, you know, I thought floated very close to the wind on this, even some weeks ago. And now that charges have been laid, most media should be responsible. They know they're their responsibilities to the legal process to not prejudice any future criminal proceedings. But there will be some that will still kind of share that gossip and that speculation. And that's where the danger lies. And that's where the public will also join in. And so, yes, there is a very strong responsibility of the professional media to avoid that speculation and to discourage the public from speculating as much as possible. Mm, Because in the end, justice, whichever way it goes, is vital, isn't it? Exactly. We want the evidence that has been, you know, tested in that committal hearing to go forward that can be, you know, for the Crown, it can be then questioned by the defence and only the jury are really qualified under those circumstances. They're the only ones who will be hearing all of that evidence and they have to be untainted. Don't guess, don't gossip nothing subjective and just purely stick to facts and then let the legal process play out. Xanthi Mallet is a criminologist and an associate professor at the University of Newcastle. Erin Patterson has not entered a plea and has not applied for bail. This episode was produced by Anna John, Lara Corrigan and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is David Cody. I'm Sam Hawley. ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free.